We've officially gone a month or so into 2024. So far, things are shaping up to be just as good as I expected. We've got some surprises here and there, and we have a lot of anticipated titles getting the amount of hype that I've anticipated for them. But it's never too early to start looking forward to the spring season, right? As the title suggests, today's list will be on what I think are 10 of the most anticipated anime coming up our way this spring. Hold on tight, because we've got some big hits coming up. At number 10, we open with The Fable. <laughs> Now, that's a title that doesn't exactly match expectations at first glance, to be honest. After all, Fable here refers to our protagonist, a hitman so good at his job that his boss offers him a suggestion. Take a break from the killing and return to a life as an ordinary citizen. Accompanying him is a woman who'll act as his driver and pretend sibling, and consequences await them should there be a single kill during this vacation from the underworld. The Fable's premise isn't exactly new. In fact, I can see some parallels to something like Way of the House Husband, where the dark and dangerous intersect with the mundane causing comedy to ensue. The main duo and the way they deal with their newfound life ought to bring in more than a few laughs. All the while, there's a healthy amount of intense and dramatic moments to keep the stakes high for what it's worth. It's a pretty good watch for those looking for a relaxing time. And number nine, here's Windbreaker. You're Delinquent stories have had a bit of a resurgence as of late and they've got different ways of depicting their titular characters. It's not too rare that we see them depict the normally notorious delinquents as people who can be jerks but have a pure heart underneath all that tough exterior. In Windbreaker though, we have a protagonist who goes against the grain in that sense. Justice, honor, protecting the town. Well, none of that matters to Haruka who only has one goal in mind to become the strongest and fight his way to the top. If there's one thing that Windbreaker does really well as a manga, it's in how it presents its fights. They're cool in manga format and they get a boost from some of the character backstories that surprisingly go really hard in the dramatic sense. Characters and the action do most of the heavy lifting for this series and it really is something that fits in well with the crop of stylish shonen stories that are becoming popular these days. This will be a glory to see in animated format. Next in line is the third Third season of Reincarnated as a Slime. It's been a while, hasn't it? The last time we had a reincarnated as a slime season was 2021. Absence does make the heart grow fonder, as they say, and I'm really glad that we're finally seeing Rimuru and the gang again. Being the third season of an ongoing franchise, there's not much I can tell that's not going to be too spoilerish as we go deeper into Rimuru's journey from lowly slime to a powerful demon lord. Slime has always been pretty good at covering the source material volumes, though, so I'm expecting a well paced adaptation for this third season as usual. I think I can can let loose a tidbit to hype you and tell you to look forward to Rimuru vs Hinata. Otherwise, expect the usual from a slime season. We're talking cool visuals, some nice fights here and there, and the usual political and nation-building goodness people have come to love the series for. Yes. <laughs> Number 7 on the list is Spice and Wolf. <laughs> The newest show to join the remake treatment is... Spice and Wolf? Now that's something that I didn't see coming. I've always known Spice and Wolf to be a good show that had a modest following even in the modern era, but it never really struck me as an anime that needs a remake. Consider this a pleasant surprise though, as newer fans can get to experience the magic of the economics anime as new episodes come out every week. The focus on trading, economics and character chemistry gave fans a fruitful and unique experience back then. The dynamic between Holo and Lawrence was something to look out for, and I fully expect this new version to maintain a lot of the charms that made the original so successful to those in its main demographic. While the heavy emphasis on dialogue and the comparatively mundane may cause people to brush Spice and Wolf as a show that's not easy to get into, I mean, I'd say the opposite. It's something that I can readily recommend to any fan just because it's not something you see every day in the world of anime. <laughs> But hey, are you aware that whenever you watch anime on the internet or even just connect to a public Wi-Fi, there's a possibility that someone's tracking you and can steal your information? 
Well, you won't have to worry about your search history getting leaked with the sponsors of this video, NordVPN. NordVPN hides your IP address along with your online activity through its safe remote servers using a secure encrypted connection. And not only that, you can also change to any country on Earth, which means getting access to anime specifically available to that location. You see, if you're watching anime on Netflix in countries like the US or India, you're not getting the platform's entire library. By using NordVPN, you can easily change your location to the country where the anime is available and you can now bathe in every single anime series you want. It's no longer like going to a convenience store with its limited choices. With NordVPN, you can enter the supermarket and be spoiled for choice. If you're interested, click the link in the description below where you can get four months extra on a two-year plan with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash vinitube. Back to the video. Mission Yozakura Family is next in line at number six. Social interaction has been a struggle for Taiyo Asano. It's been this way ever since his family died in a car crash. The good thing for him though is that he's got one more leash, one last crutch to his social life. His childhood friend by the name of Mutsumi Yozakura. Unfortunately, little did he know that Mutsumi actually belongs to the strongest family of spies and continued interaction with her puts him in the crosshairs of her overprotective brother. Thus, the challenge is made. Dayo decides to put an end to the charade once and for all and marry Mutsumi, officially becoming a member of the family and throwing himself headfirst into the world of spies. Yozakura does delve a bit harder into the shonen style superpowers compared to a familiar contemporary that we can draw parallels from, Spy Family. It's pretty engaging the more you ease into knowing the quirky Spy Family and learn more about them and their secrets. If you want something that's quite light-hearted and funny yet action-packed then this could be something to look out for. At number 5, we have Konosuba's third season. And we finally get back to the main Konosuba series. The Megumin spin off was nice and enjoyable for me, but I'm not gonna lie. I miss Kazuma and the rest of the gang already, as I feel what makes Konosuba so good is the overall dynamic of our insane band of degenerates. They work so well together, and things don't have the same magic touch without the complete gang together. Well, we don't have to wait too long to see our favorite misfits back as a group. Expect the usual crass humor, exaggerated reactions, and non stop insanity. Mark your calendars, April 2024 is just a couple of months away. We have a very promising upstart at number four, Gaiju number eight. <laughs> In the war against Gaiju, there are two kinds of people. Those who take to the front lines and engage the enemy, and those who hang back and get relegated to clean up duty when things are done. Unfortunately for our protagonist Gafka, he happens to fall into the latter, a status he's less than proud of and hopes to escape. Things take a turn for him after an encounter with a parasitic Kaiju, and he soon finds himself treading the line between human and Kaiju. With his newfound powers, he decides to finally take charge of his life and give his dream of battling monsters one more try. Kaiju number 8 rose to prominence with its innovative take on the usual monsters versus humans tropes in shonen. Out with the teen heroes and in comes a middle-aged man. It's also the game of cat and mouse with Gafka hiding his true nature from the rest of the allies, a handicap out of necessity that's sure to be an interesting spin and a major talking point moving forward. Kaiju number 8 looks to be a very promising addition to the shonen library and it's a great chance to kick the season off for any anime fam. <laughs> The top three most anticipated would naturally include sequels like My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia has officially reached the seven season mark, almost a decade of running, and it's already taken us through a whole load of ups and downs and told countless stories of challenges, heartbreak, triumph 
and despair. Its longevity, owing to an ever-expanding world arc and a large cast of characters with their own stories to tell, has always amazed me. With the manga having made some headways into its climax, I have to wonder how many more seasons we'll have before that grand finale. Either way, whatever made you love My Hero Academia for the past six seasons, you're sure to get more of that with this seventh season. Just as the stakes get higher, things get more intense in anime form, and it would be really fun to see a lot of the key moments shown with motion and sound. Given the series track record in adaptation, I'm pretty excited for this one. The second place on the list is Mushoku Tensei Season 2 Part 2. Mushoku Tensei is also coming back after a season that in a way departed from the first season's approach. Overall, the second season was a slower burn, a character study and a more thorough showcase of the world, all while fielded with some excellent art and sound direction. And of course, in true Mushoku fashion, you still have the debatably juvenile elements and some controversy, both of which have pretty much defined the series in the general anime sphere. The second season may not have been everyone's cup of tea due to the change in formula though. However, things are about to pick up in this second part. The first part was just to build things up for the second part, where events that have huge consequences for the world's fate will transpire. With how well the series has been adapted so far, I do expect to see the same amount of care done in presenting the story. That's why I can't blame fans of the series for being so excited to see this next part of season two. <laughs> to top it all off, at number one is Demon Slayer Hashira Training Arc. And we're almost at the end game now. It felt like just yesterday when Demon Slayer exploded into the scene and pretty much took sole control of everyone's attention in the world of anime. I mean, it had such a strong entrance and carried that momentum into a half a decade of success. With the Swordsmith Village arc behind us, we now move on to the final parts of the build up to the climax. Tanjiro requests the most intense training he's ever had, all the while Muzan is also on the move. And with the final showdown on the horizon, the excitement is overwhelming. At this point, we pretty much know what to expect out of a Demon Slayer season, god tier fight animation, some really insane fight choreography and a plot that's simple but that gets the job done. And that brand of excellence is something that people are looking forward to seeing. I'm curious to witness how it will elevate this arc that admittedly works as a transition before the grand finale. <laughs> It's no surprise that Demon Slayer finds its way to the top of my chart that's completely based on my personal observation. But what about you? Have any surprises found their way into my list? Tell me what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you again for the next one. See you soon and have a great day.